Okay. <clears throat> so next I want to talk about, uh, you know, have a conversation about logistics and go through sort of, you know, broad overview of the class. So, um, yeah, I guess first we'll just do this. And you guys can see my screen okay? Maybe you can't quite have it this. Boom, boom. There we go. Okay, you guys can see my screen okay? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. So this is um, <clears throat> this is our our class canvas page. I have it set for um, our uh, 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 how you guys see it, not how I see it. So just real quick, uh, this is obviously our landing page. Um, there's a welcome video. I think most of you guys watched our, our little welcome video. I hope that was at least a little bit interesting to, for you. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, your main thing. So first thing to do is go ahead and hit start here. Um, if you've not gone on the, on the page yet. Um, and then if, you, if you're, especially if you're new to CSUCI or new to Canvas, whatever, by all means hit this student support. And if you're looking for, uh, if you're stuck on certain things or what have you. Um, but our main thing, you know, sort of week to week uh, would be um, our course modules. So uh, most of our modules are by week. Sometimes they might be, you know, maybe two weeks combined. Uh, but but that's where you can go and start working your way through um, our content. Our content is organized into modules. I only have the first two weeks turned on right now, um, but uh, but that's where you, that's where you can get to our readings and and the like. Um, we also have this little schedule right here, and this is um, <clears throat> uh, approximate, right? So this this is subject to change, but at least it gives you a sense of sort of what's going on. And so obviously these first two weeks, we are uh, gonna be um, uh, uh, on Zoom. Um, but after this, we fully intend to be uh, back uh, in person. And this is sort of rough estimate of what we're gonna be talking about. Our schedule may well change if we get into some really good discussions or what have you, but at least right now that this is our rough estimate of, of what we're doing. So you can always jump on that schedule if, you, if you're curious as, you know, topic wise, even though this, the module might not be on, you can sort of see what we're going to be working on. Um, this right here, if you haven't figured it out, I, I, I was trying to blast you guys with the Zoom link as many ways as I could. This is the same Zoom link we'll use. So for next week, the same, uh, the same room, the same link will work. Uh, so you don't need to get something new every week. Um, you can also, but if you forgot that link and you don't know, you can just navigate to the web page and click this picture. This picture will link to the to our Zoom session. Anytime you see this weird picture of me, um, this is my link to my uh, my uh, Calendly page, and this is how you guys can schedule my office hours. We'll talk about when those are, but but you can click that schedule an appointment. You can also. Um, you know, just come by, for example, my face to face, you can just drop in, but this is a way to uh, make sure that you guys, def there's definitely a time slot for you if you wanna um, talk to me about something in class or something about class, you know, other classes advising or, or letters of recommendation or whatever. So uh, you can just click that. Um, and then uh, two things that these are not, these links aren't live yet because we haven't, we haven't uh, got them set up, but um, we do have our, our spring seminar series. That's a one unit class that you guys can sign up for, which I encourage you to do. Um, the class meets uh, Thursday afternoons. Um, and uh, Dr. Rodriguez, um, who's the only guy here that's older than me in our program. So he actually hired me uh, uh, way back when, forever ago. Um, uh, Don is a fantastic uh, teacher. He is... Um, he started retiring though. And so um, what the process we have in the CSU system is, is you can uh, just retire or you can sort of retire for five years and where you you teach part-time and he's elected to do that part-time thing. This is the his fifth year of that part-time. So this is his last semester teaching with us. So this is your last chance to have uh, have him for a seminar. This year's sem or this semester's seminar speakers um, well, well, our, our seminar speakers can be about any topic. Generally, we have a theme each each uh, spring, and this theme is about engaging diverse groups um, and 
uh, and uh, around all manner of environmental justice. And so, so some of it is about, I think he's gonna be bringing some speakers about um, uh, 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 getting people to protected areas, how people view nature, um, all kinds of cool stuff like that. And so, so he's still working on his schedule. Once that schedule is solidified I'll, I'll, and we have a link, um, all those seminars will be via Zoom. Since a lot of these people are from different parts of the country and because of safety issues, they didn't all wanna travel. So, so those, those, those um, seminars, uh, usually every other week-ish, um, are, are, uh, are, are gonna be on Zoom. And so even if you're not enrolled in the class, this is open to anyone. So I encourage you all to attend our, our departmental seminars. They're usually great um, and a great time to chat with the speaker afterwards. Um, and so um, regardless, once that is fixed and once he has his Zoom room, I'll, I'll, this will be a link to it. So if you wanted to catch those, um, those seminars, you just click here. And this other one that will be uh, reactivated, I've just been too busy to, to do much in the last few weeks, but um, this is something we... Um, uh, was started by sort of support for our coastal management class, but it's really about coastals and disasters, all kinds of stuff. Um, and that's the same kind of idea. It's an informal thing on Zoom, talking with various folks, uh, people that might be able to give you a job or just cool topics um, and stuff that will um, augment, hopefully supplement our um, our disasters class here, but it's not required. So you don't have to attend these. These are also typically Thursday afternoons, sort of not the same, uh, different week than the seminar speakers are. So hopefully those are fun. Um, and uh, they, were, they were pretty fun, I think, last semester. People enjoyed them a lot. Um, so, so yeah, so great. So those are our do drop-ins and our seminar series. Um, and, then, uh, and then we have our syllabi and modules and all that kind of good stuff here. So um, hopefully everybody is uh, uh, good to go with that. Um, next, a question so far? Dr. Ray, the, the, the seminar with Don Rodriguez is also going to be able to ask questions with regards to um, employment, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, he's organizing, so I don't, I don't know every single person, but absolutely, you could totally talk with folks about uh, career ideas, internships, totally. Very good. Good, other questions? Okay, cool. All right, then let's uh, jump over to, um, so this is my, my uh, solid syllabus, my PDF, my, my, my printed version of my syllabus. Um, when you go to our syllabus page on, the, on our uh, Canvas page, you can get to this. This one though, this is just the first draft. So as the semester evolves, for example, Sam was asking about Sam was asking about field trips, right? This will be updated, um, and uh, and and so our our syllabus on our Canvas page will be updated. This stagnant PDF, this document won't be, but you you can link to this PDF if you just want to have an archive of this or something like that. Okay, so with that, I'm, but it's a little bit easier for me to navigate and just go through the. Um, the, the PDF version, the, the printed version. Um, so uh, uh, I'll, I'll run through this. I do want you guys to uh, go through the, the syllabus in detail and make sure you see if you have any questions and make sure everything makes sense. Um, so uh, obviously we are synchronous these first two weeks, but after, um, after week two, we fully expect to be back to regular in-person classes. Those classes will be in our, um, our tech lab on the second floor of Sierra Hall. Um, and this is the area where we, we do our drones and, and, and stuff of that nature. Um, um, so that's where we physically will be. Um, we will hopefully have some field trips, uh, but again, as I mentioned before, I've not, not um, discuss, discuss those yet, but we will in, in a couple of weeks. Um, our, our final window, our final deadline is Monday of finals week, and we will have a project that's due then. Um, I'm, this will come up when we, when we talk, about, uh, uh, talk about assessments, but I'm, I've tried to de-emphasize tests in this class. So we're doing more projects, but less, uh, less um, you know, midterms and that kind of stuff. Nevertheless, that um, if, if you guys are figuring out when you're gonna be done with our class, 
uh, the 17th of May uh, is when we will be done with, uh, we, when you will be done with submitting stuff for our class. Okay, as far as my office hours, I have two office hours and you guys can always, if these don't work out for you, by all means, we can talk and figure out another time uh, by, by appointment, by arrangement. But these are my default times. Ideally, if it doesn't matter, ideally Monday for stuff related to disasters. Um, the stuff on Tuesday is, I, I, that's my more general chair office uh, hour and a half. So, so um, while you can come either of those, if you, know, if you have a class that at Monday at 1130, you just can't, can't make that, it's totally cool. But, but as much as you can, if it's about general class stuff, career advice, what have you, hit me on Tuesday. If it's more just technical specific to this course, uh, come on Monday if you can. Uh, Monday, again, for these first two weeks, we're all virtual, but for, but after, after week two, um, Monday, uh, Tuesdays will be virtual all the time, just so it's, uh, people have that option if they, if they choose to do that. But generally speaking, Mondays will be face-to-face -face up at tortillas. So go up there and have lunch. Uh, we can sit outside at tortillas. I'm assuming it's not raining. Um, and so uh, we can be outside uh, without our masks on and, and you know, spaced out and, and talk to each other uh, and, and be all that kind of good stuff. Um, so that is, those are my office hours. Again, to schedule one of those, um, you can schedule those in 10 minute increments. Um, you can go to uh, my calendly.com slash pirate lab, or as I said, on, on our Canvas page, you can just click that, that picture of me that says schedule a meeting. We'll take you to the website and, and it'll come up with available times, right? So Monday and Tuesday, and you can pick which time you want. Um, they're 10 minute time slots. A lot of times students just have a quick question. If you, if you really wanna get into some stuff and think we need more, just schedule the first 10 minutes and the next 10 minutes and it's, and it's all good. And you can schedule that up to two months in advance, um, uh, the meeting with me. Um, and when you do that, I'm gonna ask you for uh, just real quick name, uh, uh, cell phone, email, you'll get an email reminder that that's when your, your time slot is. Um, and then there's a little quick thing that says, what's this about? Is this about disasters? Is this about capstone? Is this about general advising? Just so I can have a sense of what's going on. And when you do that, there's also a, a link to if, you know, later on you're like, I don't need to meet with him or you're sick or whatever. You can also cancel through that, um, through that same dialogue box or, or through your email. Um, it looks like everybody, I, I haven't completely checked, but in glancing at it, it looks like most of you guys are on Slack which is great. So Slack, so Slack is our, um, oops, where we go? So Slack is our way to communicate, uh, our default communication thing. So you guys are doing an assignment and you're like, what? I don't understand. He said he turned this thing on, but it's not turned on or whatever. That's the best way to post. So um, so activate that if you've not, I invited everyone, if you've not, um, if you've not finished activating it, please do finish that and just post in the general, in the general channel right here, right? So you can just come up and say, Hey, I have a question, blah, 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 click. And everybody will see it. You can also directly message me, just me or any of the other students. Um, but in general, your questions should be posted in the general tab. So you can say like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. This thing is lame. And all of you are more than welcome to reply as well. If you know the answer, right? It's like, oh no, he actually said that um, it wasn't gonna be turned on till Tuesday or whatever, right? Go ahead and just, just please chime in there. So this is a way for us to get answers as fast as possible. Um, and uh, and I'll, I'll you know check this as frequently as I can, but you guys may well um, uh, be able to get on there faster than am I. And so this is the default. If you don't get an answer with this, uh, then you can uh, you know, try emailing. Um, and if it's really critical and you're like, I don't know what's going on, you, you guys can also, um, oops, you guys can also, uh, you guys, so here's my email here and you guys can also um, text me. So the only challenge with emails, I'm, I get about 500 to 600 emails a day. And it's just really hard to, to keep up and, and stay ahead of my email. I'm, I'm just, I drowned all the time in email. So by all means, you guys feel free to email me whenever. But, um, but if I don't respond really quickly uh, and it is time critical and I'm not, on, I'm not getting back to you on Slack, whatever, 
the best technique will be for you to send me a text and just say, hey, Dr. Ray, I really need an answer to the email from Tuesday at 9 a.m. Because even just being on here since class started, I probably have another 100, 120 emails. And I, I, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm too overcommitted. So um, that's, that, that's not to say you guys aren't important to me. You are, but that's why I want to give you all these ways to reach me that, that are just, just you know, priority for you guys. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, obviously, um, Slack will work when we're on our, hopefully when we are on our field trips, but also text. So always have my cell phone for when we are out and about um, if, if you need help or, or something of that nature. Cool. All right, great. Uh, next, I have some quotes here, which we'll, uh, you know, talk about later, quotes related to disaster and, and all that. Um, uh, so our course description, um, we're talking about disasters of all types. Um, this is not a class the way most disaster classes are. Um, so most disaster classes are about the physics of the, the event or, or how, the, how, the, how the action of the impact unfolds. Right, those are classes. That's not an ESRM class. So we are. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about how a disaster unfolds. What are the factors influencing it, etc. But we're also interested in the context. We're interested in the the stuff leading up to, or perhaps encouraging these disasters, as well as is trying to get a sense of what are some of the down the downstream impacts of these disasters. What it does to communities. What it does to ecological integrity. All that. All that kind of stuff. So. Um, so this is a more a, a broader view than most traditional disaster classes, um, and, and a little bit less focus on the on the the physical going on of the of the disaster. We're a more we want to conceptualize disasters more inclusively. Uh, we already spent a good amount of time talking about uh, COVID, but again, we will hopefully be returning to face to face week three. As far as what we're doing in this class. Um, uh, we are going to, you are going to be learning to identify the different types of disasters, so-called natural disasters and so-called anthropogenic disasters. Um, I want you to, by the end of this class, be able to illustrate how these different aspects of our society and the natural world interact to, to make disasters more likely or make the consequences of disasters more, more problematic or, or vice versa. We will uh, do, um, you know, we will spend some time uh, doing graphing, pulling together data, you guys making, you know, doing uh, quantitative visualizations of the patterns of disasters and things of that nature. And then um, while this is, this is not a policy class per se, we're, we're focusing on the, on, on the um, goings on with regards to disasters proper, but nevertheless, you should be able to begin to get a sense of what some policies and different approaches um, would, would be, or some desirous policies or approaches would be to try to minimize um, the worst of uh, these disasters. That's our intellectual uh, uh, goings on. As far as on a more practical uh, sense, you guys will be reading more papers. I know you're all stoked for that. Reading more, reading more stuff, awesome. Um, both technical and popular press accounts, more so than any of my other classes. Um, we actually will have a, 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 a higher proportion of newspaper articles and things of that nature because of um, just the fact that so many of these, these events unfold very quickly and, um, and that uh, popular press coverage is actually a, a, a key element to understand what's happening, et cetera. So technical papers as well as more general public uh, accounts. As I mentioned before, you guys will be doing some graphing. Um, want you all to grow in your confidence of being able to interpret things, look at stuff, read some stuff, look at some data, synthesize, and you come up with some takeaways and, and you feel comfortable in your interpretation of that, that information. Um, and then uh, also to just, you know, these things can be very depressing, right? To be totally honest, right? Disasters are, are sad things by and large. They're, they're unfortunate things. They, they make us feel bad. Um, but one of the ways to deal with that, those negative feelings or that depression or that, that sorrow is to understand that we, do, we can have an influence, right? We, we, we have some agency here. We are not just leaves blowing in the wind. And so through this class, I hope you have a bit more um, 
uh, sense of your ability to influence uh, these types of things. Okay, um, this is kind of weird. I'm, I'm just rambling, rambling, rambling. Uh, any questions so far on anything? Okay. Uh, um, you mentioned newspaper articles. Mm -hmm. um, would that be any of like those sources like New York Times, LA Times? I know for some of them, they have like a monthly like amount that you can view before they may start making you pay for them. Or yeah, so yeah, great question. So what I do is when I have those types of things, um, for the week, say say that was a thing I wanted you to read this week, there'd be there'll be a link to it that you know the ideal thing, the best thing is to click the link and go to say the New York Times web website or the LA Times website. Uh, that'll be the, the richest experience, the best one that you can have. Um, but I always have an alternative. So I'll always like do a PDF of it or something of that nature. So if, if you um, don't have a subscription to that thing, or you've run out of your free, you know, whatever, um, there's always a way to, to look at it. Sometimes these things that are like really uh, interactive, you know, I can't have all of that, but at least the, the main nut of the article you should be able to get, even if you do not have a subscription. Cool. Uh, any other uh, questions so far about what we've what we've talked about? Okay. Okay. So next, um, uh, most of you have, or a lot of you have, sort of gotten this up and running already. But I just wanted to uh, be clear. So one of the key things we will be using is um, a scoop it, which if you guys have taken my coastal class, you're familiar with that, or or maybe one of my uh, drones classes, you, you're familiar with that. But Scoopit is just a way to pull together, um, it, it's, a, it's a curatorial site. So it's a way to just pull together pages, newspaper articles and things of that nature. So I've added, you, I've added all of your addresses into our page. We'll talk about that, um, I guess maybe we'll talk about that next after this, after this section. Um, but uh, so you should all have had an, received an email sometime yesterday. Uh, it might be in your spam folder, but it would it doesn't come from me. It comes from the scoop it thing. Oh, let me also say that as we're starting to get into things here, as we're starting to get into some of the tools we're going to be using over the course of our class, everything here is free. At least it's free for you, right? So some of these things, um, maybe it's a New York Times article uh, or uh, website you're you're navigating to. Maybe it's scoop it here. They may have, give you some pop-ups or an option or whatever to, to join, right, to, to pay. I think it'd be great if you, if you guys, I think we, we need to support journalism every way, shape, or form we can. Um, the press is a key. The press can be totally stupid and lame and annoying and stuff, but, but it's a key part of our democracy and, um, and our news institutions are, are definitely under assault in late uh, past decade or two. Um, so I encourage you all to, if you can financially, to actually get memberships to, to local papers and national papers and things of that nature. Having said that, none of the things for our class will you need to pay for. So even if they sort of give you some implication, don't, don't pay for stuff. All of these things are uh, the, the stuff that's set up or the, or the options that we will use, there's a free version, a way to, a way to do that um, without you paying money. Again, if you really like the tool we're using, knock yourself out, go ahead, get a subscription, but you don't need to. So we'll be using uh, Scoop It as one. Uh, ArcGIS Living Atlas is another, which you, you may be familiar with from our, our, our GIS courses. Um, uh, okay, and then uh, and then we need we need a, a robust graphing tool. So Excel doesn't cut it, right? Excel is a great thing for manipulating data and organizing stuff, and you know, nice spreadsheet tool. It sucks for making quantitative professional figures. Uh, it is true Excel can be hacked, and you can spend a gazillion million hours getting it to look decent, but that's that's not what you should be doing. Um, so. Uh, those of you that have come through our, our ESRM curriculum uh, will have been exposed to R, the free, the free pr program environment um, cross-platform uh, to do data visualizations and analyses. 
if you're a transfer student and you took your your intro stats class at some other um, university and and you you didn't learn R or whatever, uh, that's cool. Um, the default one that I'm going to suggest you guys use is this one called Plotly. Um, uh, but uh, you can use anything you want that's a professional graphing tool. So other the, the two most common examples uh, that are that are free for you are R and Tableau. Um, I don't I'm agnostic. I, I don't you don't have to use Plotly per se, but I will usually just do an example in Plotly because uh, if you guys don't care, that's the one I think is the simplest to use um, and, and the most straightforward to use. Um, all of these are um, are uh, Platform independent, browser based, etc., and um, and you can make uh, you know graphs. When you would go to submit those, you guys will make a PDF of them. You'll you'll make a stagnant version. Um, and and if I said you know make a graph and turn in this graph, um, you would use um, that that uh, PDF option or export option as your uh, thing you'll submit. So uh, uh, Plotly, uh, as with these other things, the very first time you just got to go in and sort of set up a free account. Um, you are, uh, I'm a, we will, I'm very confident we'll be able to do uh, field trips. Uh, and so um, at some point uh, you need to, you guys will do a project where you'll, you'll document um, some aspect of, of disasters in your neighborhood, some other area, whatever. And so you need a, a, a smartphone, you need the ability to make a, a you know, brief videos basically and do very, very basic editing. Um, and so uh, one of our first examples just says, you guys do an introduction video for me, like a one minute introduction uh, video. Uh, and that will just tell me that you have access to, to that. If you, if you don't have a smartphone, if you don't have a smartphone with a decent camera, whatever, you, you can check out cameras from the library. So all kinds of, uh, of ways to do that. But you know, 99.9% .9 of you will just use your phone and a, and a free editing, uh, editing program. Uh, as I mentioned before, disasters are our Slack channel for uh, most of our default communication. Um, uh, if we do some collaborations, online partnering, whatever, class activities, whatever, um, we will be using um, uh, Google, the, the Google Office environment. So primarily that's Google Docs and or Google Sheets. And then um, uh, when you guys do writing, you, uh, as with all of our stuff, you should be familiar with, if you, if you haven't yet, if, if you're sort of new to ESRM, um, we really wanna make sure you guys have the best practices and these skills. All these things that we're talking about here, these are all useful for disasters, but they're also super useful for your career, right? So all of these things can go with you once you leave, uh, once you graduate and take them with you. And that includes this process of archiving, finding your sources, tracking what you've been reading, and then citing them properly. So properly reference, referencing them. It's all good that you can pull in additional sources, we want you to do that, more power to you, but you need to properly note where they came from. So you can use as many as you want, but you need to use proper attribution. And the easiest way to do that is to use a bibliographic program, which just keeps track of the name of the paper and the, the author's the year, that kind of stuff. And it makes writing much, 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 much easier when you can just embed this stuff in your, <clears throat> in your Word document as you're typing it out or what have you. If you've not used bibliographic software before, the, the first time or two might seem a little clunky and you know take an, an hour, a couple hours to sort of figure it out. It will save you weeks if not months if not years over your career though so it's totally worth a little teeny bit of investment to, to figure out how to use these these databases of information um i'm listed so there's three examples i've listed here again i'm totally agnostic you can use whatever you want i use endnote most of the professionals that i work with we use endnote um which you have a, a free web version of that as a student at cscci but once you graduate that would go away um, I have the paid version. Um, you can buy one as a student for like $114 or whatever, a perpetual license, something like that. Whereas once you graduate, it's like 600 or something dollars. Um, but there's also Zotero, uh, Mendeley. There's also free versions uh, of bibliographic software that, that you're welcome to use. Again, I don't care what, but you need to, to use one of those, of those tools. And you should just be in the habit of this. And this should be for all your classes, not just not just uh, disasters. So 
So a great habit to get into. As far as um, our course materials, uh, most of the stuff will be on our CI Learn, our, our Canvas page, our disasters page, um, mostly organized by week, by, by module, excuse me. And then each module should have a, a, a readings and viewings uh, sheet that will will pull together the material for that week. Um, the exception would be uh, our Scoop It site, and, and I'll go over that in a sec. But that's again where you guys are finding readings for this week, and and uh, and you're you're uh, finding interesting things, throwing them in, and so so that will not be within CI Learn. That'll be inside the Scoop It environment. Cool. Um, so uh, with that, I I, I want to show you really quickly Scoop It, unless people have any questions. Any any other questions about the logistics stuff we've been um, just talking about? Okay, cool. Dr. A, did you yeah. say EndNote is a cost to us or no cost to us as long as you're a student? So what I use, I have a I have a, a program on my computer um, that is that, that the product product's called EndNote. Um, and so I pay for that. And so mine I, I and and that's just what I've been doing for the last 20 years, kind of thing. Um, but you guys are welcome to do that. You're welcome to buy your copy and get the dis get the discounted price as a student. But you also have access. In recent years, that plat platform, while it was born as a as a program living on your hard drive, it's increasingly moved like so many things to the cloud. And so there's also a version of it, excuse me, called EndNote Web. And so if you buy the version, you have both the on your computer and the web version. Um, as a student via the library at CSUCI, they pay for all of you to have access freely to the EndNote web version. So okay. you can use the, the, the free version of EndNote. It's not quite as powerful, but it, it does the basic stuff. Um, but just note that um, when you graduate, you would lose that. Whereas with Zotero and Mendeley, uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's yours. Once you graduate, it's, it's free all the time. Um, so. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Uh, somebody else had a, a question. Okay. Um, okay, great. So, uh, so real quick, let me let me just show you guys um, scoop it, just so you, you have a sense of what that is. Um, so this is our scoop it site. Again, uh, uh, check your email for your invitation. I've made you all co-curators. And so all this is, is basically a, a fancy website. It's not even fancy. It's a pretty basic website. But the idea is it, um, it is a way to easily take things like a news story, which is mostly what we're going to be doing. Um, but, but it could be um, a, a blog from a government agency or a professor's, you know, essay, you know, about disaster, you know, something like that could also count. So, um, so how we so what what you do here is we just say um, hey let, let me find something like um, PCH fires or whatever okay so here's a story I found and here's here's a story now every once in a while if this if this article is behind a paywall so if it was I don't know, the Wall Street Journal, which doesn't allow you to, to read the articles, even a little bit, right? The Wall Street Journal is one of those places that's totally locked down. So you must pay for it for you to see it on the web. You must be a, a subscriber for you to see it on the web. A website like that won't work here. Everything else will. So as long as you can see the, see the content, uh, even if it's just you know a temporary thing, you only have five free views, as long as you can see the content, this will work. And so what we'll do is, um, th there's other ways to do this. I, I have some how-to videos using a, what's called a bookmarklet and stuff, which gets a little fancy, but but this will work um, for all the stuff you're doing. So here we go. So I found this story, I'm, I'm searching around. Oh, this looks interesting. I, I, I you know I read it, I wanna read it first, make sure it does make, make uh, sense and applicable for our class. And this one's talking about the winds and then it led to this brush fire and Big Sur and Sonoma and you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is all good, American Red Cross. Here's a map of the current, uh, the current 
uh, what's known as the Colorado fire because it started in Colorado Canyon. It's not in the state of Cal Colorado. We'll talk about that, talk about the naming conventions of wildfires, which, which I think are confusing. Um, anyway, so, okay, so check this out. Yep, I read it. This is an article that is relevant to our class and I think other students might, might find interesting and, and speaks to something. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna grab the, the um, now, now I should say I've, I've already activated my account. So this is not the very first time. So first time you need to activate your account, and set it up. But, but once, we've, once we've definitely got access, I'm gonna copy that link is this guy lagging? Uh, and then I'm going to go to this, uh, our, it's called Coastal Restoration, but it's Coastal Restoration and Disasters. So I'm going to come up here and in this little area right here where it says paste a, a, a link to create a new scoop, I'm going to hit paste, hit this green uh, button right, or this green arrow thing. It's going to think for a minute and then it's going to pop up. It's going to, in most cases, if there's a picture associated, a, a graphic associated with that article, it's going to grab that, it's going to grab the title, etc. And it's going to populate this, this, this thing right here. Um, then I'm going to come right here where it says it exclamation mark. And I'm going to say um, this, what the heck happened there? I'm going to type in here and say this is a great example of how of um, the impact of climate change on fire starts in I don't know coastal California California okay so just a you know a sentence a sentence or two a little, little quick summary like why why, why this was why you deem this worthy that we, we check it out, right? Uh, you can put a lot more in if you want, by all means, knock yourself out. You don't have to just put a sentence, but, but you know something, have a look. Note here that I can tweak all this. So if every once in a while the, the title will be weird, I can edit the title. It, every once in a while, um, there'll be uh, you know, too much text. There'll be like paragraphs and paragraphs. I can, I, can, I, can, I can tweak all of that. Once I get this the way I like, you can put tags in and stuff. You don't, you don't have to worry about tags and you don't have to worry about just leave it to publish now. So basically you're, you're working on, on this side of the equation. Once I get that, I've typed in my, my little uh, uh, brief summary. I'll hit publish. We'll think for a second. And now, and now this shows up. So the most recent articles will be at the top. And there we go. So um, if I now, if I'm a viewer, all I have to do is, is, is click this and I'll, I'll be taken directly to the article and I can read it. Um, you guys, each week, you guys will be posting, you're welcome to post as many stories as you want, but you, you're only responsible for posting one news story. The rules are that it has something to do with disasters, okay? Um, ideally, a local disaster, ideally the kind of, the, the theme that we're talking about this week, but that is not required. So if we're talking about earthquakes this week, you're more than welcome to post a, a cool story about a fire or, or what have you, um, uh, and so on and so forth. The only requirement is that it does have a direct tie-in to disasters, and not theoretical tie-in, but, but, a, but a tangible tie-in. And then two, that no one else has posted that specific story. So um, I just posted this story from the LA Times, no one else can publish that. If you use the same one, generally speaking, Scoop It will give you a warning. It'll say, whoa, you already, you already posted this. Are you sure you want to post that? Um, but every once in a while, because sometimes stories are a little uh, organized slightly differently on different days by websites, sometimes the automatic catcher won't catch it. It's your responsibility to make sure that it's not posted twice. If it is, you don't get credit for that, that thing that week. So just look and have, have a look and make sure no one else has done that. Now, that does not mean that, that you can't post an additional story about the same disaster. You just can't post that same exact story. So for example, here, this is a story about the, the Colorado fire on, on PCH from the LA Times. Maybe you find one from the San Francisco Chronicle. Maybe you find one from the New York Times. That's all legit. It's okay. It's not something that... that only one person gets to post a story about that fire. It's just, we don't wanna repeat the same exact story. Okay, so that's first part is, is 
put a put a story out there. Uh, next, you should be checking frequently and, and reading through these. I'll, I'll pull uh, quiz questions from these stories, things of that nature. Um, but you also need to respond to at least one story at least once a week. Again, you're more than welcome to, to comment a lot. And so for that, what I would do is right here, see how it says reaction right here? If I click reaction, um, I can go ahead and I can respond to that. And so I can, I can say, ah, this was, I'd say, well, I mean, I posted this, but let's say, I don't know, Alexis posted this one or something. You're like, Alexis, that was, that was interesting. This reminds me of blah, blah, blah. Or this seems to be different from what Dr. A said or, you know, whatever. And then um, it would be great to have a dialogue in there, right? So if you posted that story or somebody else posted that story, feel free to respond to what they said, right? So this is more of a, an opportunity for us to informally just, you know, keep thinking about these issues and these themes and environmental justice, uh, uh, investment, federal investment in safety and, and, and environmental impact, all that, all that kind of stuff. So this is um, meant to be a fun thing. I'm sure sometimes you guys are going to go like, oh God, I have to go do this this week. But, but this is really more of a you guys finding information, putting it in and keeping this, you know, keeping it fresh and keeping, keeping uh, 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 the ideas burbling up as we go. Cool. Make sense, everybody? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so that's that's uh, our Scoop It site. Um, let's see, uh, what do I want to talk about next? Yeah, so so I want you to read all the stuff um, in here, uh, but uh, I'll just I'll just skim to some other parts here um, since we don't so we don't take up the whole time with with this uh, logistics stuff. Since you can since you'll read this yourselves, I'll just say that um, uh, these are we have some default formats for submitting stuff. There could be an, an instance where I'm asking you to do something and I want you to do something differently, in which case I will, um, I'll, I'll tell you about that, right? But the default thing for submitting, say, an, an essay or, or what have you, or a, a, a description or a figure, the default will be PDF. So generally speaking, you want to save that thing uh, as a PDF put your name on it and whatever the thing is. So, so PDF of, uh, you know, fire hazards or whatever. Um, so it's uniquely named. And then, and that's what you'll upload to the assignment uh, area. When we do have videos. So for example, this first week, I'm having you guys, as I said, make a quick one minute video where you just say hi, just to make sure that, that everybody has the ability to do that. Um, just, I want you to upload that as a, as a movie, a dot MOV or a M Actually, I'll also allow uh, MP4s, um, but you know, basic default universal uh, uh, file formats. When it comes to, you might be doing some collaborations at some point, um, or or pulling together some data um, with your fellow students, what have you. And so we might be using Google Docs or Google Sheets. If I ask you to submit that link, make sure that you don't just sort of copy and send it to me. But you, you, you first make sure that you're sharing the version that's that's anyone with this link can see it. Anybody on the internet with this link can see it. Uh, and when you when you do uh, reference stuff again, by all means, I'm not expecting you all to have invented every possible idea about disasters ever. It's all good, but do make sure we credit the source of the information. And so we'll be using author year in text citations for that. And the, the literature cited at the end, the bibliography would be um, ecology style. Again, if you have your bibliographic software, the first time it's a little bit of getting it set up, but then it's locked and loaded for the rest of the, um, for the, rest of the semester. Um, and, I, and I have some stuff to explain that as well uh, uh, later on. Um, okay, uh, next, uh, hopefully we won't be super virtual most of the semester, um, but we will be using these tools like Scoop It and Slack for the whole semester, even though we will mostly be face-to-face. Um, -face. And so just want to make sure uh, we're all on the same page here. So, so for better or worse, Zoom is here to stay, um, at least as an ancillary tool. And our in this online engagement spaces, LinkedIn, other tools like that, they're here to stay. So want to make sure that we're all being the best, uh, you're practicing the best professional uh, digital literacy that, that you can. And so what that means is 
Um, I want you guys to get everything locked and loaded this week. What do I mean? I mean, every single thing you sign into, Slack, uh, uh, CI Learn Canvas, um, Scoop It, uh, Google, all these things, Zoom, they should all be the same identity for you. So uh, first and foremost, you need a good headshot. So what do I mean by headshot? You guys can also, let me see, where's my camera? You guys, okay, so I mean a headshot is like this, right? So, so a good picture of me close up, okay? Not me at the wedding that I cropped and I'm, I'm 17 feet away or something. Love the fact that you guys are out in the field camping. Don't want a picture of you camping, right? These icons, as we all know, these icons are we oftentimes are pretty small. And so if I'm this big, and uh, and that's that thing is the thumbnail size. You can't I can't tell who the hell it is. I want to learn everybody's uh, uh, what you guys look like. I want to learn everybody's name by uh, you know name by their face. Uh, it's a challenge when we all have the masks on. So I need all the help you can get because I'm an old dude. I'm really really old. And, and I have a crappy memory, so you need to help me, right? Just like when you're going into a job interview, you wanna put the best foot forward for, um, for that potential employer, et cetera. So if you guys don't have one yet today, go outside in the nice sun and get a good picture, a good selfie, right? Um, and so you want it to be you know tight and all that good stuff. <clears throat> and then I want you to use that have that as your identity image for all of your stuff, okay? And, I, and I, I do not want you to not be creative. I love the fact that you guys sometimes, this is what I was for Halloween, and like, that's cool, but, but we're practicing our professional comportment here. So, so if you don't have a good uh, image, take one today. Uh, and, and, and please, without a mask. So I wanna see your, your full face, so not, not sort of hidden behind some um, safety uh, device. Um, and then when you guys are, are putting your identity on there, do me a favor and put your first and last name. So not just your first name. It's okay, uh, you know, if Sam, wants to, if, if Sam wants to go by Sam instead of Samuel, that's all good. I'm not saying you have to have your, your, the, the name that's in the, in, in, in the whatever, but, but, but first and last name. It's, it's too hard for me to figure out when some, sometimes I have students with the same first name and stuff. So first and last name, and that should be across all of our platforms. So, so Slack should have that as your name. Uh, uh, Scoop It should have that as your name and your same icon. So we can follow each other um, across, uh, across stuff. Um, yeah, right, okay, good. Uh, and then the other bit is um, when, when I'm doing my boring lectures, like I am right now, like today, I just ramble on for hours. I'm, I'm you're so stoked to be in this class, I can tell. Um, it's totally okay if you guys wanna have your camera off, all good. Um, but uh, when we are doing discussions, when we're, we're you know, back and forth, um, I want everybody to have your camera on. Uh, and, uh, is, and I know it's hard, uh, especially after we've had two years of this, you know, you're stuck in your bedroom, watching your screen and all that crap, I, I get it. But um, just like we want to model good behavior in terms of our, our avatars and our, and our names for all these, all our digital identities, I want you to also work very hard to be um, not just engaged, but showing that you're engaged. So um, when we do get to our discussions and back and forth and those kinds of things, um, lean into the camera, right? Don't lean back, lean in a little bit of a smile when, uh, you know, Eloisa or Brooke or whoever the hell is says something, hmm, a little bit of, little bit of a nod. Hmm, okay, I hear you, I hear you, right? Give some feedback. Um, we've, we've sort of gotten so used to just being dead on, on Zoom and these things um, that it's kind of come to be seen as normal. Let's break out of that, right? We're, we're, we're in the process of leaving this, this Zoom world, right? Um, but we want to make sure that um, we develop these habits so that, again, when you guys are going for those interviews and things, you come across as a really uh, a great colleague. Um, just because you're not nodding and whatever, I'm not necessarily assuming that you're not paying attention, but it really helps to, to signal to me or whoever our other speaker is that you are engaged. So all that stuff is really, really best behavior. And I want to uh, ask you guys to please uh, all do that. So this week, 
uh, please go through and and as you are onboarding, as you're as you're joining Slack, as you're as you're getting used to Scoop it or whatever, make sure that you're you're not just doing the minimum, but you are putting your name correctly in there and your um, your avatar in there. Cool. All right. Awesome. Uh, next, uh, I want to make sure that I. Uh, I hit this home, which is that um, you know these disasters are disasters suck, right? Disasters are are bad. They um, they can be very sad things. They can be very traumatic things. And sometimes when we're watching some of these videos or or reading about these things, they can um, you know really bring us down. Um, by all means, I don't want anybody you know bummed out, right? We're, again, we're we're learning about this stuff to be empowered. So that we can minimize these these bad things, right? Um, but you know, if we're talking about stuff and it just gets to be too much at times or whatever, it's totally cool for you just to send me a little send me a little you know offline note and just say, hey, Doctor A, I'm, uh, this is a little much. I need to take a you know ten minute break. It's all good, right? If we're in class, same thing. If you just decide, hmm, I need to walk around for five minutes out on the, the patio outside, it's all good. Um, just uh, just uh, uh, let me know that that's what's happening and, and don't just totally disappear. But, um, um, uh, and, I'm, and I'm more than happy to talk about that beforehand or after, after um, if, if you're really getting bugged by some of the things we're, we're seeing or, or talking about. Cool? Okay, so um, uh, let me talk about uh, uh, timing and then we'll talk about uh, sort of grade stuff. Um, so the first thing is our default deadline for most, most of the stuff uh, for assignments is going to be Friday at five. So we are in week one. So most of our week one things will be due Friday at five or, 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 or by Friday at five. This week, because we're just starting and you guys haven't, you only have a couple days, even though the assignments for this week are basically very easy. They're like, take these, do these couple quick questionnaires kind of thing, right? Um, but nevertheless, because we're just still sort of getting started, and sometimes we have, I have students that, you know, join the class, you know, tomorrow or something like that as they add the class. Um, this week, I've moved that to Saturday. So even though you guys should be able to do all this in half an hour, um, it, it, uh, I'm giving you this week an extra day. But normally, if you're doing graphing, if you're if you're doing a write up or something, that's going to be due Friday at 5 p.m. Uh, with uh, with one notable exception, that notable exception is the scoop it stuff because the scoop it is you you find a source and then comment on a source. It can't all be due at the same time, right? There has to be enough time for people to react. So because of that, um, please have your your scoop it post done um, by noon on Wednesday. So, so your new post, if you want to do multiple posts throughout the week, go for it. But, but at least one thing should be posted by noon on Wednesday. And then that means your fellow students can start looking at it on Wednesday, right? And they can start commenting and, and know that there's a, a, you know, a range of, of stories they can look at. So your response, your, your, your response to at least one of the stories is, again, due Friday at five, but, but the first posting is, is Wednesday. Cool? Okay, the only other one that, that's a little bit of a deviation from the everything due Friday at five, um, I do want you to do, so each week or most weeks, there'll be some readings or viewings. And so for those, uh, uh, I want you to have done those by the start of class, okay? So uh, might have quizzes, might have discussion things, whatever. So I want you to have read that stuff by, you know, Monday at 8 a.m., okay? So there isn't necessarily something you turn in, but I want you to, you know, spend the weekend doing the readings. Um, uh, and, and generally speaking, those modules will be active on Friday, if not beforehand. They, they could be turned on, you know, before. Uh, that week, but um, the week two readings should be done by 
by our class on week two. The week four reading should be done by Monday of week four, et cetera. So I, I'm sorry for all these sort of, it seems a little bit complex, these deadlines, but I, I'm trying to keep them steady throughout the whole semester. And so, um, so it's a little bit complex, but they won't change from week to week, generally speaking. If, if, if we have some delay or there's some craziness or whatever, I might, I might extend a deadline, but, but those are the default um, deadlines. Cool? Okay. Um, uh, so we're getting close to our, our, our next break. Um, I guess what I'll do next, just to sort of wrap this up is, um, so, so some of these things we will talk about uh, as we get to them. Um, and again, mostly this first week is going to be about um, just uh, uh, getting up to speed and, and turning things on, et cetera. Um, but uh, this is our grade breakdown. So I'm not anticipating doing any exams per se. We do have a, we'll have a lot of quizzes and those quizzes are, are more factual based things. Was this, is this statement true or false? You know, here are these four things, which one was the, the biggest problem, right? So they could be coming from our lectures. They could be coming from scoop -its, They could be coming from our reading. Basically the quizzes are a way for me to make sure you guys are, are keeping up on the reading and, and being engaged. Uh, so you guys will do uh, our scoop it posts, um, notes. Talk about that in a second. Uh, we'll have some quizzes. Um, we are going to do. I am going to have you guys do a tour of a disaster site. More on that later. After we'll save that for for after week two. But you guys will do some some visit to some site and do some interpretation for us. Uh, then we'll do. Uh, case studies. We'll we'll talk about um, uh, how disasters uh, how, how disasters in the past have played out, uh, and then there'll be a whole lot of assignments. So let's we'll graph this. We'll visualize that. What have you? And altogether, that's about a quarter of your grade. And then there'll be some yet to be determined. Uh, again, probably determine that after week three to make sure that everything's good. But we'll have some final sort of overall assignment synthesizing our our. Um, our, our learnings about disasters, and then just a the general participation. Participation meaning you guys are showing up, do you know do a quick attendance. When we have discussions, are you showing up? Are you are you giving feedback? That kind of stuff. So that's our that's our courses. So no midterms, no finals, uh, no final, no no midterm exam, no final exam per se. Unless you guys want one. If you guys really want a midterm or final, you can just let me know, and I'll 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 give you guys uh, more tests if if that's really your jam. Um, okay, so uh, so two things, and then we'll take our break. Uh, so uh, notes. So I just want to say about notes. Notes are uh, four times through. Where's where's my notes? Where's my notes? Where's my? Oh oh, I, actually, let me. Sorry, um, I also want to talk about field trips real quick. Um, but uh, uh, notes. I want you guys to be taking active notes. So you should be jotting down info during a lecture should be jotting down info, in actively engaging with our readings. Don't just throw it up on the screen, go from the top to the bottom. Um, uh, mark it up. You can use a PDF markup tool, uh, have, a, have a you know note paper, take notes, whatever. You need to positively be engaging with this stuff. Don't just be a, um, a, a, a sponge that's just sucking up stuff. You want to, mm, okay, that reminds me of this thing we talked about last week, or this is a good example of blah, blah, blah. So every week you should be should be generating um, some notes. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean copying down every single word that I say or every single bullet point in my lecture. Rather, that's you creating your summary of my notes. Right. To do that best, you would take your notes and and probably recopy or organize those notes around. There's all kinds of tools you can do this with. A, a sim simple pen and paper is great. Some of you like to type up your notes on, on a Word document or a Google document, whatever, that's cool. Um, this is the thing that I discovered uh, over the summer. So I don't know how you guys can see this, but this is a, this is a, a, a note-taking app on this iPad. And I use this Apple Pencil, but, but I just, I write stuff. I don't know if you can see that, but I, I just take notes so I can both have um, words as well as images. But it's also electronic, so I can I can move it between um, different uh, different platforms. 
it doesn't matter. However you do, you guys need to be taking notes four times throughout the semester. I will be surprising you by saying, hey, this week, I want your notes from this week, in which case you need to, uh, if it's a, if it's a written notes on a piece of paper, you can just take a photo and upload the images of that. If it's a, if you've been typing it up, it could be, you can just save it as a PDF. Um, so the format I don't care about, but I want to see evidence that you guys are engaging with the material and actively thinking about stuff. Um, okay, more detail later, but, but that's sort of a one that you guys might not have had in your other classes. Um, and then I want to um, mention field trips. So uh, again, uh, we will revisit this after week two, once we're sure that we're back face to face. Um, but uh, when we go places, uh, it's important for me to make sure you guys understand that we won't be going anyplace dangerous. Um, uh, we won't be going indoors on these tours. So all these things will be outside. Um, the first one I'm hoping to take us to is uh, La Conchita on the Rincon Coast, where we had the massive landslides uh, in 2004 um, that killed a bunch of folks um, uh, to some wildfire burn sites, et cetera. So when we do do that, when we, when we do engage in these field trips, uh, just like all of our ESRM stuff, um, we have to, um, you know, behave safely. And so that means that, uh, and autonomously. So where we're going, there aren't necessarily bathrooms, aren't necessarily water fountains and stuff. So make sure you, you have everything you're going to need. Also, um, no matter where we're going, even if it's just a simple place off of a road, uh, everybody has to have protective gear on. So you have to have good solid boots, good solid shoes, no flip flops, that kind of stuff. You should bring an ability, something to take notes with, your, your, your phone, um, notebooks, et cetera. Uh, and while uh, you don't have to wear masks, we'll be in a situation where we'll be spaced out and we'll be outdoors. And so our school requirements, safety requirements, the county requirements, et cetera, do not require us to have masks. You are by all means more than welcome to keep wearing masks if you so wish. Um, and even though, as I mentioned, buffs, I don't have a buff on it, I guess I'm having a buff on, uh, uh, buffs are no longer considered okay for indoor masking on campus, but for outside field trips, they're great, right? So, so cut down our breathing, a little bit of sun protection, that kind of stuff. So, so for outside stuff, if you guys do wish to wear um, a buff, you can. If you wish to wear nothing, you can do that as well. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so do realize that those trips um, uh, are, are um, will be engaged in, in a safe manner. And, and we'll talk about uh, getting there and all that kind of stuff and logistics and how we can help folks if you guys don't have a car and, and jazz like that. Um, but yeah, so that's our, that's our main thing that, uh, that, that that's sort of our, our main overview of our syllabus. I think that's most of the stuff I wanted to talk about. There's stuff about, there's a section here on, on citations and jazz. And um, we of course support uh, all our students that need disability accommodations, um, all that kind of good stuff. So again, look through, I expect you to go through our syllabus online, which has more detail here and, and covered the stuff I've talked about plus other stuff. But by way of overview, um, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Any questions so far about our um, general overview of our class? Okay. Okay, then with that, um, I have, uh, by my class clock, I have 9.56. Let's take another, um, let's take a little bit, let's take a nine minute break. So let's, let's start up at uh, 10.05. We're gonna come back and have our first initial discussion, uh, very easy about uh, disasters. So um, if you are good to go, if, if, if you're good, um, I, would, I would recommend trying to uh, uh, activate your Scoop It site and try to do a first posting. That way, if you guys have any problems, you can, uh, you can let me know uh, today. But um, but awesome. I will see everybody in nine minutes. We'll start at 10.05.